my mom lived in Denver, my dad lived in San Francisco, and I would travel between the two cities like a little shit-talking messenger. Told you everything, boy. Show up in the Bay Area with a scroll. I bring news <laughs> from the Rockies. <laughs> Patricia says you're a drunk. A loser. <laughs> a liar. Yo, 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 what's goody, what's goody? It's your boy, man, Smoke County J up in the building, dawg. We back with another reaction video, ladies and gentlemen. Doing some stand-up. We doing a comedy stand-up. Uh, nah, but Dan Soder. What y'all know about that Dan Soder, you know what I'm saying? I don't know nothing about him. So I'm about to react to him, you know what I'm saying? For the first time, Dan Soder on the road, full stand-up comedy special, you know what I'm saying? This junk has been trending on YouTube. All on my feed, you know, since I've been right, I mean, watching stand up and stuff like that. So I've been trying to figure out the perfect time to do it. Right now, I have the perfect time 39 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Let's tune into it. Y'all tune into it with me as I tune into it. That and make sure y'all like and subscribe. Click on the notification bell because your boy is here for a good time and a long time, long time, long time, man. You know what I'm saying? So let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get down. Got my little blicky blick. Uh, from the litty lit. <laughs> you better get sticky stick up in his bitty bit. All right. Dan Soda, let's get it. <laughs> Let's see if this guy, how funny this guy is. Some new material on the road. I want to be fun, dumb. You ever seen people that just have it where they're just like, you ever seen someone with the right amount? Where you're like, damn, you have it. You just, it's all green lights for you. Fun, dumb. That's what I want, dude. Turn the lights down. Just, just barely. Just one more. Turn the lights down one. Not two. I don't want to be so dumb I can't live alone. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying to burden a family member, but... Facts. <laughs> I just want to enjoy... Like, I would love to walk in a room and see a Fast and Furious trailer and be like, they're going faster? <laughs> I go lie. Them people be living some great lives, man. Them people that's that type, like, like I go lie. <laughs> like, fucked up? Like, how? Hot people, hot people get to be pretty dumb. Because they're so hot. Hot people get to say dumb shit and we're just like, yeah, right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? They're like, do you want to go dance in the rain? And you're like, God, you're a free spirit. <laughs> if an uggo said that, you'd be like, shut up, you wet dog. No. It's pouring God, You got him an uggo? Hots know. Hots know they get to say some stupid shit. Because they know if you disagree with them, all they have to do is touch you. You ever been touched by a hot? <laughs> buckle immediately. You go, actually, I don't think that's right. You should look that up. And they go, no, it is. And you're like, I want to write you a poem. I'll kill for you. Oh. <laughs> About 10, 12 years ago, I dated a woman, very whimsical. She was very whimsical. And I, I never, I never disagreed with her. And one time we were leaving a diner in Queens and we were going back to my apartment and we had to go over an overpass over the highway. And we got to the top of the stairs of the overpass and she looked back at me and she said, don't you ever feel like running? And then took off. I was like, bitch, what you doing? Hey, slow down. <laughs> I've never felt like running. <laughs> and she did the whole, like, across the overpass, down the other side, gone. Couldn't find her. Just ran hard as fuck. Terrifying. What if she said, what if, what if, what if, like, they all, like, frolic and stuff, and, like, <laughs> and it's like, they get to a certain point, and just, <laughs> and just start taking off. They look all good and shit, and then they get a certain distance. And they just <laughs> she was gone. I could not, legitimately, could not find her for five to ten minutes. 
one of the most terrified I've ever been in my life. Because I was like, she's dead. And there is zero chance the NYPD is believing my story. <laughs> Facts. Showing up being like, let me get this straight. You got to the top of the stairs. And this woman said, don't you feel like running? <laughs> yeah, we got him. <laughs> <laughs> fucking kill her. <laughs> but I was jealous because she would always like, you know, she, she was comfortable naked. That's got to be cool. <laughs> That's got to be so cool. Hot it people, is cool. Man, they get it's to cool. just fucking enjoy it. I guess I'm hot because I love, hey, hey, shit. I have nothing to be, I have nothing to be ashamed of. I love being, I can, I, never mind. Please get to have sex come and then be like, where do you want to eat, babe? I oh, dead ass late nigga. Oh, they like, like this. Like, what is this? Soft as hell. What? Niggas be scared to lay down soft? What? You can't tell me nothing. You think I'm not, I'm laying down soft. I'm wiggly down there, baby. <laughs> what? I'm kicking that. I'm kicking back. What? The job is already done. <laughs> what you trying to watch? What? I'll spread my legs just to let them know like, yeah. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't worried, bro. It's the confidence. It's the confidence. You got to have the confidence, bro. That's all it is, bro. They, they'll like that. They'll like that for sure. But, oh, damn. You look good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I know, baby. But who are you right now? I've never had sex without at least once being like, what is this? <laughs> who are you right now? This isn't you, you're a silly goose. <laughs> and I'm sitting there being like, yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Do you ever make a noise during sex and in your head you're like, what was that? I hate it. I talk shit to myself all the time during sex. I'll be like, oh, that feels so good. You're like, oh, does it feel so good? Does it feel so good? Shut the fuck up. Shut up, you idiot. You're sweating all over this poor girl. <laughs> I thought that you was could dead ass. Now. It's funny because during sex, you can say whatever the fuck you want to say. Like, if it's good enough, you can, anybody can say whatever to you or to, you can say whatever to them and it, it won't be weird. I promise you. I promise you. It'll be like, sugar cane pop tarts. Them shits might be hitting right now. You should be like, what? It'll be like, nah, my bad. And you just keep going and she'll just, yeah, they, yeah, they would be good. Like, she started, <laughs> started talking, <laughs> started agreeing with you and shit. I'm the older I got. It turns out it just gets worse. I'm 40 and it's not, I, I turned 40, was worried, but it's not bad. It's actually Damn. fun. Well, not all. It's harder to poop. <laughs> but I'm less horny, and it's kind of nice. It's finally quiet. <laughs> Since puberty, I've been dragged behind my dick like it was a runaway horse. <laughs> yeah. See big titties, and you're like, ah! <laughs> Now things are more settled, you know? I'm sorry for stopping it so much, but, but, but what we think is grow arms and legs and start crawling. <laughs> See some titties inside. <laughs> Did grow some arms and legs and shit. But I like it. I think that's why men are all messed up in our teens and our 20s is because we go from being little boys to creeps. <laughs> Overnight. Shit. You know, one day you're just I pray like a I never like that, bro. That just wants to talk about dinosaurs to anyone that'll listen. You know, you're just cornering your parents. Somebody said, oh. Like, Did you know the Stegosaurus was from the late Jurassic period and it was a herbivore? And you wake up the next day, you're like, I want pussy. <laughs> I remember them days being clean, All man. All I want is pussy. Not, not 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 saying I'm dirty. I said being clean. I mean being clear, basically. Like having none of that in my mind, bro. I remember those days, man. Not worried about women at all or bills. Fuck, a life with no bills, bro. Oh my gosh, we're never going back. Fuck. Uh.
and now I'm 40 and I'm back to loving dinos. And <laughs> it's, uh, it's great. So, uh, a lot of good work being done in the paleontology world. Now, I still like sex, but if we're being honest, at the age of 40, you know what I like more than good sex? Good sleep. <sighs> I think I like good sleep, too, now, though. If my fiancé was like, do you want to sleep for nine hours uninterrupted? I'd be like, ooh, you fucking slut. Get over here. Ooh, I'm going to hold you? I'm going to snore loud as I A can. Blow job? What is this, 09? <laughs> I'm trying to stuff a pillow in between my knees. <laughs> That's how you get sex noises out of me at 40. Put that pillow there, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, my hips are lined up. <laughs> oh. It's easier to navigate when you're less horny. Life is just easier, you know, Instagram, way easier. I still look at butt models pictures, but now it's just to read the comments. Yeah, that's crazy. It's my favorite thing on social media. The comments, the comments are comments funny, on bro. sexy photos. The comments on general, in general, bro. Boiled up butt outside of Miami. 413 comments. You're like, let's rock and roll. <laughs> Because immediately it's just dudes being like, Mia Bella. Oh, Hard God. Emojis. <laughs> Hello, form. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be a different well, language. Just like, I hope you had a great day today. You're like, ew. <laughs> That's the horniest shit I've ever read in my life. I swear to God. Did you type that with your boner, you weirdo? <laughs> Oh, I hope you had a great day. I bet. <laughs> come and then come back with that same energy. Oh, God, bro. Oh, God, bro. <laughs> I like Instagram because it'll tell on your friends for being horny. Oh, God, bro. Instagram will be like, look at this fat ass. 35,000 people liked it. And, and then Jeff. And Jeff. Oh, God. <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> Oh god! Oh god, bro! Oh gosh, bro! Oh gosh, bro! I I saw something crazy one time, and then I saw the homie liked it. I was like, "Hey, yo, you freaky frog, motherfucker! What, bro? That's some funny shit, bro. That's true as hell." Cause that's what happens when you when you get too horny, you get in trouble. That's just oh, as a man, if it breaches the horny level, you're gonna do something stupid. I almost lost my fiance during COVID, not even to the virus. Damn. To a Bluetooth speaker. Oh. Yeah, if you've porn. been in this situation, you know where this is going. Is it either porn or a phone I, call? I brought, I brought the vampire into the house. I bought, I bought her a waterproof Bluetooth speaker so we could enjoy music in the shower. That was it. We both loved it, used it, had a great time. COVID hits. We're locked together for seven weeks. By around week five, you know, she's taking a pretty long shower. And I was in the living room, and I was like, I could probably watch some adult entertainment. I knew it. Oh, man. That almost cost you a marriage, though? What could go wrong? I can't imagine how jarring. That gotta be, though. Porn is out of context. Yeah, facts. A hundred percent out of context? That's gotta be wild. Porn is wild as fuck. She's washing her hair, singing along to SZA. And then instantly it's like <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it's gotta be a lot. And I have no idea how that feels. I do know how it feels to watch porn and not know where the volume is. 
That's the one I know. Where you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Trying to turn it on mad loud. This lady looks like she's screaming her head off. <laughs> Just mushing on that up button, you know? Like, Give me something. Give me anything. <laughs> then through the wall, you hear just like, fuck me. You're like, ah! no. <laughs> ah, no. Even telling you guys that's making my pee hole snap shut. <laughs> oh, my God. I heard it. And immediately I was like, run. <laughs> run. Damn, bro. You know, because there was a virus in the sky killing motherfuckers. <laughs> Facts. At that moment, I was like, just tell her the truth. Tell her the goddamn truth. You watch porn, nigga. And I went and stood outside that bathroom door. I was like, you're going to tell her the truth. You beat then the chicken, bro. Open, and I was like, hey, I opened an email, and I... <laughs> <laughs> Verbatim what I said. She told me when it happened, she tried to manually turn it down on the speaker. And then I kept tearing up. I was hitting up. <laughs> it just looked like I was bullying her with porn. You know, like, you're gonna fucking listen to this. <laughs> well, she stayed, thank God. Thank God. We are getting married. I don't like calling her my fiance, I think that's too fancy of a word. I like calling her my wife elect. <laughs> Let's her know, you know, my like, wife you to votes, be. But you haven't been sworn in. I want... <laughs> no policy changes quite yet. One of my best friends just got married. You know, all my friends are married and got kids now, but my best friend just got married in Guatemala and invited me to really test the friendship. That's far as hell. Sorry, but you're two whites from Colorado and you're going to make me go to Guatemala? I was worried we were going to have to do those photos that white people love to do where all the groomsmen have to subtly act like we want to fuck the bride in all the photos. Yeah, that's, that's some <laughs> you know weird shit. I, well, I do white people like, do she that. She has her leg across four of us and we're all holding a piece with our sunglasses down. Like, Why well, do they do that, bro? <laughs> Are we about to gangbang this bitch? <laughs> <laughs> or a photo where like she shows us the wedding ring, like I'm not a whore anymore, and we're like, what? Oh, bro, that is right. Why do people? Why do people? Ha What's up with that? Where's the banter in that? Why, why is that? Why? What makes people like doing that? There's none of that. Instead, they did a drone photo. That was the big one, and that was like the thing they were, they were like, all right, guys. The wedding DJ was like, time for the drone photo. Gonna jump in point. I was like, no. Like, count of three, jump in point. And I watched all my friends be like, I don't wanna do this. <laughs> and then that countdown hit, and it was like, three, two, one. Everybody was happy, yeah, okay. Corniest shit I've ever done in my life. Probably made it's the craziest. Easily the most privileged thing I've ever done. <laughs> Because usually in a third world country, when a drone shows up at a wedding. <laughs> lot less jumping and pointing, a lot more running and screaming. That's fun. It's a fun joke. That was a funny joke. That was a funny joke. Nah, they're happily married. That was a good wedding to go to. I'm a child of divorce. Clap if you're from a divorced family. Yeah, sounds about right. Usually when you're under 10 and your parents get divorced, they tell you it's not your fault. They love to say that. It's not your fault. It's completely your fault. But that's the please drink responsibly of divorce. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know when beer companies are like, drink all night, please drink responsibly in case you fucking kill anybody. That's why parents do it in case you grow up to be a psycho. And then they're like, I said it wasn't his fault. My parents hated each other. Hated each other. No internet. Damn. They hate, damn. It went all through me. <laughs> damn. My mom lived in Denver. My dad lived in San Francisco. And I would travel between the two cities like a little shit-talking messenger. Told you everything, boy.
Show up in the Bay Area with a scroll. I bring news <laughs> from the Rockies. <laughs> Patricia says you're a drunk. <laughs> a loser. <laughs> a liar. <laughs> Go home two weeks later. I told him, mother. <laughs> <laughs> says, good luck getting child support. <laughs> with, the little, with the little white wig on. <laughs> Button up. <laughs> I never paid a dime. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta respect the stat line. <laughs> it's true, never paid her child support. And in the United States... In 1997, the United States enacted the deadbeat dad law, which meant if you didn't pay child support, you were going to jail. My dad died in 1997. That's crazy. Buzzer beater! <laughs> you can avoid child support at all means. The Indiana by any Jones, means. dude, he slid down, grabbed his hat. He's like, <laughs> Good luck with that big headed weirdo. <laughs> That's funny. My mom hated my dad. That's my mom hated up, my dad funny. so much, she dated my dad's ex-best friend. Also my godfather. Yeah, it was a little bit of an alcoholic Hamlet going on. I'll say a godfather. Used to get shit-faced at dinner and just talk shit about my dad. They'd get blackout and be like, he's a fucking loser. And after a while, you know, you're like, well, he's my dad. Start being like, well, he's pretty good at catch. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, how do you know? I hated my mom's boyfriend, man. He was so mean. He'd get drunk. He'd call me stupid because I'd speak incorrectly. He'd be like, you're a fucking idiot. You're going to grow up to pump gas. That's what he'd always say. Damn. You're gonna pump gas. You're like, yeah, Joe, like two states do that. <laughs> Literally. Learn Literally. your insults. Do Who's that. the idiot? We don't do that around here. And I couldn't, here's the thing. He never hit me. He never fucked me. Sorry, made love. I didn't have a case on him. Verbal abuse wasn't a thing in the 90s. It wasn't. I couldn't go to my guidance counselor at school and be like, I have a problem at home with my like, mom. Like, tough nigga. They'd be like, what's going on? Does he touch you? Does he hit you? You're like, he kind of owns my ass at dinner every night. <laughs> it's just like a mean roast every night. Now, he did something worse than hitting me or touching me. He joined a 50 and over <laughs> swim league. <laughs> Masters. That means Speedos. These are men over 50 swimming competitively. So every Saturday morning in the winter, they'd wake me up out of my warm bed, and I'd have to go sit in an indoor pool, fully clothed. Mm. I hope none of you know that hell. That smells crazy. I know that smells crazy. You smell too. of chlorine, and you're just sweating in your mm. pullover starter jacket. Mm. Then you got to watch a guy that hates your dad and is currently fucking your mom. Mm. You gotta watch him just cut through the water. <laughs> was like he, a dolphin. To this say, day, was he fast? best swimmer I've ever seen I'm about to say, okay, wait, 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 was he good, was he good? It was insane. First time I watched him swim, it took my breath away. <laughs> Look at First him time go, I watched him speedos. swim, I was like, well, I won't be fighting him in the water. I gotta take this guy out on the land or in the air. <laughs> Do you know how bad it hurts to have someone talk shit to you and then put on swim goggles? <laughs> He's like, yeah, hey, your dad's a fucking loser, and that pool's wetter than your mom. <laughs> I hate you, Joe. I hope you drowned. I'm such a people pleaser. I got. I tried to get him to like me my whole life, and I hated him. That's what sucks. People pleaser. 
it's one of the worst things because you oftentimes try to get people to like you that you don't even like. And it sticks with you your whole life. I think every American is afraid of being in a mass shooting. Everybody is, right? I'm specifically afraid of being the guy that accidentally lets the shooter into the building. <laughs> All it would take is a guy going, hey, door's locked. That's it. I'd be like, oh, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes later, it's like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry! <laughs> It is. I just do dumb shit. I try I to do good stuff. Carrying three ARs on his back and a whole knife and four pistols. I thought it worked out. And I do. It's just. It always goes wrong. I try donating money for a while. That's stupid. Yes. Yeah. Donate. First off, donating money is the most American way to help. Just giving money and being like, "You do it." I'm waiting for an Amazon package. <laughs> but one time I read this news article about this guy that got locked up in Rikers Island for a nonviolent crime, and he ended up dying in there because he didn't have bail money. And I read that, and I was like, that is so fucked up. That's fucked up. I should help. So I started donating to this place called the Bronx Freedom Fund, and I gave them money to help nonviolent criminals get out of jail, and I felt so good. I was slapping my own back. I was like, mm, I'm so good. Then an article came out that the Bronx Freedom Fund released a nonviolent offender, turns out pedophile, went to Queens, got a kid. My bad. Damn. He bailed that nigga out, man. Month later, another article came out that the Bronx Freedom Fund let out another nonviolent criminal. He was schizophrenic and beat four homeless people to death in their sleep. I read that, I was like, am I funding crime in New York City? <laughs> yes. I'm just the worst Batman villain of all time. It is the I, Batman, the donator. <laughs> I have been releasing pedophiles and murderers. This is how dumb I am. I wrote him an email, I go, can I get a refund? <laughs> like, that's not how this works. I don't know, man. It's, that's, that's one of the things that makes me feel older is I get nervous about technology where I'm really <laughs> nervous about it. You know, I get, like, scared by technology. Because we were the first, you know, if you're near 40, near the age of 40, we were the first generation to have the Internet. We were the, remember how mean we were to our parents? Remember that? They'd be like, I sent an electronic mail. You're like, it's email, you dumb bitch. <laughs> don't pick up the phone when I'm on the computer. And then now there's shit coming out that scares me. I was like, oh, what? It's AI? I was like, so the Pope wasn't wearing a puffy white jacket? <laughs> oh, God. It took me a week to learn that wasn't real. <laughs> of course, it's crazy. I don't have TikTok on my The phone. Pope wearing a puffy white jacket, bro. Oh, my God. A Montclair coat. Pope coming that bitch iced out. Oh, my God. The, look, the, hat, the, the hat has an NY symbol on it. <laughs> Take that chain with a cross. Bro, 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 bro. bro, bro. I'm, fiance I'm, has it bro. on her phone, and she shows it to me like I'm her fucking grandpa. <laughs> she really does. She shows me TikToks, and I'm like, oh. And those dogs are friends? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this one. <laughs> he got the perfect TikTok's voice. It's wild, dude. It's, if you go on there, you see some crazy shit. There's a whole trend on TikTok. I'm making none of this up. There's a whole trend on TikTok right now where people are self-diagnosing themselves autistic. No doctor. Not one medical professional consulted. It's just them, two camera, 
right down barrel. It said they have motivational autistic. music playing. And then they put text above their heads that they point to in like a real smug, shitty way. <laughs> and it's all regular shit. They're like, I used to be afraid of large crowds. I thought I was socially awkward. Turns out, I've been masking my autism for 27 years. I'm autistic. <laughs> what if... That's funny as fuck. What if we only use the word retarded for those people? <laughs> That's it. That's it. Never for anyone with a disability or anyone with a special need, just anytime someone is like, yeah, I'm self-diagnosed autistic, you can be like, oh, you're fucking retarded. <laughs> Bro, that would make sense so to be the time to cause my retarded. Because that's fucking retarded, bro. That's past ignorant, bro. Why do you want to be? First of all, why do you want to be that? And then on top of that, what? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, it's just, it's, a, it's too many whys in that situation for one. It's too many whys to not say you're retarded. And they'll be like, yeah, because they're full of shit. <laughs> it's crazy they do that because that's the one good thing about the internet is you can prove people wrong instantly. You ever done that? You ever Googled something in front of your friends and been like, look. How good is that feeling? Yeah. Oh, it's the closest I've gotten to slam dunking. It's just be like... That and shutting an elevator door on someone. That is such a good feeling. You shut that door, you're like... Ah, that's how you got in the room. I got into an argument with a younger comic. He's in his mid-20s, and I was telling him about the music that came out after 9-11. I don't know if you were old enough to live through 9-11, and you didn't forget. <laughs> Ooh, let me catch you forgetting. <laughs> but the music that came out was bonkers. For... <laughs> bro, bro, the camera on the side, bro. The view from the side is crazy. Six months after 9-11, all that came out was just like hyper-aggressive country music. Which makes sense. They were getting us ready for war. But every song that came out was like, Step on up and we'll kick your ass. And we were all like, ah! Toby Keith was just printing money. He made so much money, he opened a shitty restaurant chain. But radio stations back when they actually were powerful, radio stations did this thing where they took, I don't know if anybody remembers this, they took Enrique Iglesias' song, Hero, and then <laughs> spliced news footage from 9-11. Clap if you remember that. See? I'm not making this up. What a lot of people don't know is that Enrique Iglesias wrote the song, Hero, trying to fuck Anna Kornikova. So it's a sex song that they put 9-11 audio. Once you know he wrote it for that reason, go back and listen to that. You can tell how horny he is in the song. That makes it funny because, like, he probably is looking at everybody like, oh, my fucking goodness, and laughing his ass off. Him, his engineer, the producer, everybody involved in that song are... Probably was crying laughing. I'm not going to lie. That's probably the most hilarious. And that's exactly why what's so great about music, bro. Because people be trying to interpret shit so bad, bro. Talking about people dissing each other, this and that, da 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 And then it's like, nigga, no. Like, it's so funny, bro. It's so funny, bro. Oh, my God. When he's like, let me be your hero, baby. It's just him being like, please touch it. Please. <laughs> Please touch my penis. And then randomly it's like the second tower has fallen. 
It's fucking wild. <laughs> and I found it on YouTube. Because of this disagreement, I found it on YouTube. It's crazier than you remember. Go look it up. I'll give you a time marker. 53 seconds <laughs> into the video. It's a clear sexual lyric. Enrique Iglesias goes, Would you tremble if I touched your lips? And then you hear a woman go, I got thrown through a window. And you're like, what the fuck? What the fuck is that? And we put that out like, that's for the first responders. I don't know, man. It's just, the older I get, I just keep being like, I'm losing touch and I still want people to like me. It's insane. We just moved from uh, New Jersey back into New York City, and we were living in Jersey, and we had all these, like, 10- and 11-year-old kids in our neighborhood, these little river rats. <laughs> just riding their bikes around and cussing. <laughs> I wanted them to like me so bad. <laughs> so fucking bad. But then they caught me talking to my dog, and that's... <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> you don't come back from that. I don't talk to my dog in a regular voice. I don't know what kind of fucking psycho does. Who's out there being like, are you ready to go outside? <laughs> there she is. There's my snuggle bug. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be like, Look at you. That's a wrap. <laughs> I can't wait to get home to her. When I see her, I'm gonna scream into her neck fat. <laughs> I'm like, where did you get all this? Where are you, at? <laughs> you ever love on your dog and catch them being annoyed with you? Like, oh god, bro, my dog hates me. Blue hates me, bro. Before she I left yesterday, so I grabbed her by her head. I was like, I love you. I'm you can so... feel her being like, okay. Right. <laughs> Push it back. You ever love your dog so hard you wonder if you're special needs? You're like, this is a lot. You guys are going to catch me on TikTok being like, I thought I loved my dog. <laughs> Turn down, I'm retarded. I love her. <laughs> Fuck, I love her. Dogs are awesome. They're proof we dominated the animal kingdom. We took a predator of ours and gave it anxiety. That's so awesome. He's funny. He's funny. Wolves afraid of the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> they used to hunt us in packs, and now we're like, I'm going to dress you up like a fat little bumblebee. <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> Bags. You know, living in a city, she, was taking, she took a dump, and I bagged it up, you know, showed it to her, as one does. I'm like, look what you did. <laughs> did it. <laughs> and I just heard this kid behind me go, this guy's talking to his dog. Like, yeah. like Fuck. <laughs> God, I wanted them to like me. Because they're funny. They're just 10-year-old kids that ride their bikes and they cuss. It doesn't kids get no cussing, funnier than that, especially bro. Especially when they don't know the word. Because I hear them cussing sometimes. I'm like, you don't know what that word means. That's like one of the best parts of growing up, is finding out what cuss words mean. Just ripping one and being like, no, okay, that's bad. <laughs> when I was eight years old, I walked in the kitchen and my mom and my older cousin were having a conversation. And my cousin goes, yeah, it's not like I got a blowjob from her. And my mom goes, don't say that in front of the kid. Eight-year-old me immediately was like, that's my new catchphrase. <laughs> Like I, got I had no idea job. it was sexual. I legitimately thought it was a real job. <laughs> I was like, if Andy's saying it, this has got to be cool. So immediately I'm like, well, I'm going to go down the street and tell my friend Eric. He's got to hear about this. <coughs> so I rode my bike to Eric's house. What I didn't know was that his sister was having her 10th birthday party. Yeah, it's going right where you think it's going. <laughs> There was a 10-year-old birthday party in the backyard. Parents, kids, everybody. And I came around the corner and just screamed out, What are you, giving out blowjobs? 
like a tiny little swinger. <laughs> this is a key party or? I thought it was gonna kill. I thought everyone was gonna be like, who's the big kid? <laughs> Instead, I just felt Eric's dad violently grab me by my upper arm. You ever get picked up when you're a kid and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> You know, your feet start to you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I God. like his dad, too. He was like, you know, he was a good dad. And good dads are always nice to kids without dads. They always love that. That's why they're always assistant coaches. Nah, that's not why. Because good dads love to take a kid without a dad and be like, keep trying, young man. It's because they your wanna... mind, You're like, fuck off, guy. <laughs> That was the first time I ever saw him mad. Yeah, that's not why, though. Realistically, they smacking moms. Them, them, them trainers, trainers and, and them coaches, all them, they, they be, they be, they be put trying to get on your mamas. If your mom look good enough, they be trying. He was legit mad. He sat me down in the kitchen and he's like, where did you hear that word? And I just matched his energy. I was like, I'll never fucking tell you. <laughs> <laughs> You saw him be like, eh, all right. <laughs> kids from a volatile household. <laughs> I'll never tell you where I'm no, I I'm just the first 48. <laughs> 20 minutes, he just kept being like, you know, you tell me you can go outside. You can go back to the party. At one point, he put a soda down. He's like, you like Orange Crush? <laughs> <laughs> he kept saying, he's like, who said that? Where did you I love that Orange word? Crush. He kept saying the same thing. I was, was like, a phony. I can't tell you. Because I'm not a snitch. But he kept being like, who said the word blowjob? And I was like, I can't tell you. Now, if you're, if you're a man and you're raised by a mom, you know, as a little boy, you have feminine energy that you're unaware of. Nigga, roll so his by eyes. Like minute 20, I'm standing there like this. <laughs> He's like, where did you hear it? I'm just sighing. I'm going, I can't tell you. And then I saw it in his head. He was like, oh, this kid doesn't have a dad. I'll just dad on this kid. And he really did the whole thing. He was like, I wish you would tell me. And if you ever want to, I'll be right here. <laughs> Fucked me up. <laughs> oh, it got me. I, was like, uh. I just left. I just remember leaving and riding my bike home. Like, what's this guy's problem with blowjobs? Because <laughs> I had no idea what he was talking about. And then I grew up and I learned what a blowjob was. And I thought back to that moment and I was like, oh no. I might have unintentionally ruined a guy's life. I'm pretty sure my best friend's dad thought I was being sexually abused by my mom's boyfriend. Because he was like, oh. where did you hear the word blowjob? And I was like, I can't tell you. <laughs> And then I just rode my bike home, like. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, he's going to bed every night, like, we gotta do something, Martha. <laughs> That's Eric's friend, we gotta do something. No abuse, zero abuse. I was just eight years old, out having a cuss. I really did blow an opportunity. That should have been the moment where I'm like, it's Joe. Joe makes me suck his dick. <laughs> Fight him for me, please. Just not in the water. He'll kill you in the water. <laughs> so last summer, I'm out walking the dog, and I hear those kids on their bikes and I hear the nerd of the group first. I just hear this kid go, stop cussing. <laughs> and then I hear another kid go, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'll suck your cock. I was like. That little boy doesn't know what he's saying. That little boy has no idea what he's saying. And if he does, then he knows himself better than I've ever known myself. <laughs> Portland, you were a lot of fun. I really appreciate this shit.
Thank you guys very much. Thanks a lot. See you guys. Bro, he's awesome, bro. Oh, he is awesome. That was awesome. Bro, that was great. That was great. Oh, bro. Yeah, he won them ones. <laughs> he deserved the hype he getting from that. That's awesome, bro. Bro, the part where he was talking about... He was talking about delivering news to his dad and his mom. He was like, I bring news. <laughs> bro, had me so fucking weak, bro. The, bro, I said, I bring news. <laughs> Is he, bro? Who is this guy, bro? Bro, who is that? He? That was hilarious, bro. That was a great special, bro. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm not gonna lie. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That concludes the video. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Click on that notification bell because your boy is here for a good time and a long time. You know what I'm saying? And uh, follow me on Twitch and TikTok, Smoke Honey J. And that concludes everything. Thank y'all.